Ugh. Every time you touch it, I see an angry fruit start coming out. Welcome back to part three. Today we're going to be taking the intake off. We're going to show you the crack in depth. At this point, we've removed all the hardware needed to get the intake off. At this point, it's just an intake removal job. We're going to go ahead and start popping the eight millimeter bolts. These aren't, these aren't American bolts. Well, if it makes you feel any better, last year Honda and Chevy decided they're going to do something together, and I think they did this so they could avoid taxes on both sides of the continent. That's bolt number one. There's a hidden bolt. The hidden bolt. Right, even though it's right there. Yeah, but you can't see it when the fuel injection is in the way because most guys tried to take this off with the fuel injection in the way. Now, I knew someone that had a 95 that had a similar incident. They couldn't figure out why it was going through coolant. There wasn't a leak on the ground until one day it started blowing smoke out the back. And then they knew there was something wrong, replaced a bunch of parts, which I'm going to assume now have been the intake and the elbow. Every time when I go and do this, it, it like sucks in food. Every time I take a bowl out here. Oh, dude, this thing, there's a half a gallon of water we've got to have to suck out of the intake. I mean, I mean, I thought, well, if there's a little bit in there and it was just too much oil, just burn off. But it was being fed after we cleaned the oil up. So I know it wasn't the oil that did it. She is not responsible. This was failure at the water jacket. I told her it needed to be done. Kevin, at the end of the day, we can only recommend. You know, you know how many guys are on YouTube that say, you know, we warned them. We go through the paperwork. We say right here, it needed this. She's lucky it didn't bend the rods. She's lucky we got, I mean, hopefully we're going to save it. I mean, I'm not going to say right now because sometimes, you know, I'll say something up front and it's something different in the back end like this one. You know, we thought it was overfilled on oil and it was clearly a coolant problem. And in fact, there's no coolant in the radiator. All right, one bolter, don't do it again. Yeah, see all that? That's antifreeze. That's not oil. That should not be there. That's a dry manifold. That should be air, maybe some carbon, but there should be no water there. I like that. Ooh, every time you touch it, man, I see an antifreeze start coming out. All right, up she goes. Ooh, the whole thing is just tearing up. And there's your leak. Okay, well, let's take a look at the intake. You can see the water literally was going down. There's the hydro lock. All that's got to be cleaned up. This is the problem area. As you can see, it all has to be cleaned up thoroughly. I mean, once this thing got full and then the gaskets gave way, that was it. I see, see the water. Yeah. And that's coolant. I mean, there's a little bit of carbon in there, but that's coolant, people. That should not be there. Well, what about this pipe? Is this pipe okay? That's the EGR pipe. So it's being sucked in from here? It's being pressurized through this. It's actually the leak is right here through this area. Actually, you can see the crack right there. It's blowing right up the PCV tube or the EGR tube. It's blowing right up it mm -hmm. under pressure. Nice. Under pressure. Under pressure. Do, oh, do, 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 do. Copyrighted for that. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much, yeah, as soon as the uh, gasket here gave way and let the water go in, that was it. Game over. She got full, could not run. There's her hydro lock. All right, we're going to get this cleaned up. This is going to be a while. After talking with the owner, we were taking a 50-50 chance that the lower intake gasket may be um, distorted as well. And because these cars have a history of lower intake gasket problems, since we're already there, we're at the last final 10 bolts to get to the intake. Out of abundance of caution, we're going to go ahead and replace it. It would be one of those things that, you know, in theory, we could put the intake upper intake back in and it would probably work. But my fear is, give it six months or a year down the road, it's not the upper this time, it's lower, and now we're spraying fluid out the intake gasket right onto the ground. 
This this leak you're not going to see because of the fact it's ingesting it, it's burning it. But the lower intake goes, you're going to see it. It's going to be coolant everywhere. And we have some uh, idea that we have some lower intake gasket problems. If you look back here where it's all wet, you know that would indicate a valve cover problem. But in this case, that's probably a lower intake leaking up as the engine's running. The heat's going to want to spin it back this way. So at this point, we're going to pop this lower intake. We're going to do an intake job. First things first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the EGR feed off. This is where the problem begins. If you actually see right here where it's all white, that's the antifreeze actually blowing up beside it as it's, as this gasket has, or the intake has failed. The plastic side of it just blows and blows right into there, fills this up with fluid. It's pretty impressive. All right, you're going to want a short tin. You're going to want to use a small tin because of the fact that the exhaust manifold is in the way and you do not have to remove it. Except for that's going to need a breaker bar. Okay. Okay, at this point, because I can't get a straight on shot, I don't want to round the bolt off. I'm going to do an old trick here. Works every time. Anything with the exhaust, expect to fight. That one wasn't too bad. And after you remove this bolt, you should be able to pull this tube and move it out just enough so you can remove the lower intake. And that even has coolant in it. Oh man. Well, we're going to have a lot of decontamination here. That explains why we have a lot of white smoke. It's in the EGR system. That's going to take a while to burn off. At this point, we're going to get the bolts off to do the intake. One last order of housekeeping is going to be the thermostat house. Thermostat's cheap insurance. And you're going to tear a car this far down. I mean, it doesn't make sense not to do it. Now's the time. Labor's not anymore. We're already there. I want to show you something folks this is an original GM thermostat and look at that I shouldn't be able to push in on that so that was definitely needing to be done yeah, I'm gonna leave that in there for now okay at this point we're ready to remove all eight lower intake bolts I would suggest doing these by hand instead of using air tools or electric impact these are low torque bolts I think the torque the last time I did one of these was like 88 inch pounds. There's 88 to 113 inch pounds, like three, four, five pounds of torque, not very much. Now we're going to find out if this intake has been penetrated. See how that bolt's wet? That bolt should not be wet. So the lower intake has been uh, degraded. We should not have oil here. This is bad. Well, Got to get down to the root of the problem. And I can't tell you if this has been off or not before, so, but I know this much. Once oil starts getting in these threads, it's over. There's no thread lock. There's no thread sealant. So you're going to have oil leaks always up top. Okay, one out of eight. Let's go. Now, if you get one that feels tight, stop. Go back in with it. Because some of these do have thread lock. And they will when they go back in. White, not thread locker, but thread sealant. And let's see if this one's wet. Survey says. Okay, now you can see on this bolt where it's dry, but this is where the antifreeze oil soup mix got in and destroyed the sealant. This should all be sealed. So I think everyone's going to have a different story. I'm not going to show you each one, but. Just to illustrate the point, the lower intake gasket is definitely bad. I'm going to show you the interesting ones to get to, the ones that are deep in the intake. Yeah, you definitely don't want to strip a bolt. That would not be fun to fix on this motor. Now this bolt coming out is pretty grody. It's probably the worst one so far. Contaminated. There should not be no liquid on these bolts. These bolts should be dry. And these, each one of these bolts are going to have to be reclaimed because they are reusable. Okay. Not so bad, but still 
contamination from the soup. Yeah, this one feels a little tight. I'm going to take it back in just to break the thread loose because I don't want to snap a bolt here because that would be bad. Now, remember what I said earlier, it's supposed to be a dry intake. That ain't dry. Okay, as you can see here, this is what I do with cars that I'm, you know, familiar with, but not. But I want the bolts to go back in the same holes they came out of, so I'm marking them. So, front is radiator, the inside, and this inside is going to be from the other side of the manifold. We'll get to that in a second. And then when I do my back row, same thing. Back, one, two, three, four, your inside. So that one wasn't too bad at all. That first one, ooh. Yuck. I see any bets that these are going to be worse than the front ones? Looks a little bit more wetter down here. After we're done, we're going to have to shop back this entire motor out and make sure we've got all this water out because I don't want her going down the road and everybody thinking it's a head gasket when it's still just burning off residual. We're going to do our best to get this thing clean. And it's getting a fresh oil change after that, too. They get tough. Remember, take them back in before you break them because they will break. why you can't use an impact as much as I would love to can't tell with an impact what kind of fight you're having with the bolt this one is now the toughest one I've fought so far as you can see my hand is short so I'm not applying a bunch of torque until I know this bolt's not going to snap on me just go in and out it'll break free without breaking your bolt hmm soup and it's not the good type wow everyone on this side is fighting now these next two ones are going to be interesting but not bad I'll wait on that one we'll get this one that one was loose climb in and have lunch I used to tell all my boys when we worked on the 350 trucks back in the day. The back side is going to have more than this front side unless there's one I haven't seen yet. But we'll see when we start trying to yank this where the resistance comes in. Oops, starting to make that sound. Starting to sound hollow. There's a sound intake make once you get all the bolts out. They sound hollow. That was probably the second cleanest one we had. Oh, that slime is soup is all in this thing. Right, at this point, we got one bolt left. There's always that one. We call it the one bolter syndrome. It's when you start hitting on it and can't figure out why it won't go. There's that one bolt. This one was it right here. This is a 10 millimeter bolts, by the way, if I didn't say that earlier. You have to remove the upper to get to the lower manifold. There's no way around it. So. GM puts a warning and says look for the hidden bolts. I think it's hilarious. Not bad. This is my rubber mallet. This is a tool that I like to use a lot for doing this kind of stuff because with these intakes nowadays you don't know if you're dealing with steel, aluminum, carbon fiber. You can't just take your normal hammer. You've got to take something that's soft blow. Alright, what I like to do is just start giving it just some wax just to get the break loose that's there you go works every time okay at this point I like to use two hands and grab both just so we don't mar any surface yep that lower intake was done As I said, it was a 50-50 chance this intake was screwed. Well, I was correct. As you see right here, that was actually bowing out because the oil soup mix got in here. It's broken here. That's a water port. 
right here where it's all white that should be straight it's not it's broken here so we definitely had some intake leakage anyway but yeah I mean I knew it was bad I just didn't know how bad but I think this is going to be the worst of it because we're going to be able to clean it up we know the motor runs we know it didn't tick we know it's not doesn't have any damage from being hydrolocked thank god there that was a good good blessing there because I you know finding these motors it's not hard but it's not easy either all right at this point we're ready to remove the lower intake gaskets see how it just breaks apart And you're going to have to shop back the poop out of this motor, that's for sure. It should not be two pieces. Well, at this point, this is the end of part three. We're going to get a lot of cleaning done. We've got to get some parts ordered. I'm glad we went this deep for her. She's not going to have a problem with the lower intake. So if you like this type of uh, content with the 3.8 liters, subscribe. If not, we will see you in part four of the rebuild. Thanks for watching.